do, do, do. I know we were doing this one. I literally just uploaded the video this morning and I don't remember where I left off. 20 or 21. Thank you, Brianna. See, there you go. You can call me out on that. All right, so 20. I think we finished this one. This one was the one where we did like so much work because I was like, okay, we have to do different sub squares. I thought we did this one. Does this look familiar to anybody? I know we went over this for sure. But 21, I am not so sure. We did. Thank you, Brianna. <laughs> All right. That's right. Because I was like, we're going to talk about quadratics. We're going into the next topic. So solving quadratics with complex solutions. This is the one where I was talking to you guys about the discriminant. So I'm sure you guys remember with all fondness, the quadratic formula, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Right? Everybody remember this? Uh, I, nope. Not at all. No. Not, not, not at all? Nothing. We had like bunch of appointments where we talked about nothing but this formula. No comment. <laughs> Anyways, the reason why we're going to use imaginary numbers is what if this number right here was negative? If this was negative, then you can't take the square root of a negative. So that's why we're using it to solve quadratics. And I don't know if I said it in this class before, but the idea of quadratics, quad, meaning four. So whenever we're talking about quadratics, we're talking about squares. So if you guys remember, y equals x squared makes a parabola. So quadratics just means parabolas. That's all we're talking about when I say quadratics. Don't think about that. What's up? Um, Brianna asked if, if you were uh, recording. I am. I saw that right now. Yes, I am. This one was the geometry one, but this one right here, this is the one we're recording right now. So thank you, Brianna. <laughs> and thanks, Sammy, for pointing that out. I am recording. Brianna's just going to like. Brianna, you're like my class manager, I guess. You're going to be the one that's like, hey, did you copy and paste the attendance? Did you ask the attendance question? All right. So solving with quadratics. Because uh, quadratic equations have real coefficients, can we use complex numbers to figure out quadratics? So most of the time, we're going to get real numbers, like... That was the whole point of us doing the box method, is figuring out these real numbers. But what if we get something like this? Can we really use complex numbers? And we'll see that we can. This will be the one where I feel like I talked about it forever ago, when the parabola does not touch the x-axis. I feel like we're finally getting to this. So when we're doing this, what we're going to do here is we're going to figure out, oh, I thought we, didn't we do this one? Brianna, did you lie to me? I thought we, we did all this. <laughs> Talk with Edmento to settle on the fact that Edmentum is stupid. I did not have a talk with Edmentum yet. Victoria. <laughs> I should. We have a staff meeting. Maybe I'll bring it up then. <laughs> um, I think I remember us doing this, but this touches the parabola twice. This touches the parabola one. Oh, no, this is different. This is one repeated. It touches it once and it touches it again. 
This one doesn't touch it. So this is the one where we're talking about real and complex solutions. So this one, it doesn't touch it at all. So it has two complex solutions. And this one has two real solutions. They call it distinct real. Um, the reason why they say distinct is something like this. It touches it, but it kind of touches it twice. Because it's at the vertex, it touches it twice. Okay, I'm sorry, Brianna. You were right. We were on slide 20. This just looks very similar to the other one. So this one, they're getting more specific with it. They're not just talking about solutions. They're saying like, hey, you can still have solutions. They just might not be real. So there we go. So this was the one where I was talking about, finally we're at this point where if it doesn't touch it, you still have real roots. So when we talk about quadratics, I really hate this, but they use the term zeros, x-intercepts, roots. All of these mean the same thing. It's where it crosses the x-axis. The reason why they use the word roots more, we're going to use the word roots a little bit more, is technically this never crosses the x-axis. So it's not a zero because zero means where, cross, where y equals zero. And it's not, well, I guess it is kind of a zero. We'll get more into that later. And it's not an x-intercept because it never touches the x-axis. So we are going to use the word zeros because we can get this to e to make y equal zero. It's just, it's imaginary. It's not real. So let's get into this. So here we see these, we're gonna start talking about degrees and stuff. This is actually something that they teach us in, um, they teach us this in algebra one. So linear meaning it has power one. Quadratic, it has power two. Cubic, power three. That, and these are known as the degrees. Degree is the highest power. Number of roots, we're always going to have the same number of roots regardless. So if we have a degree of one, we have to have a, at least one answer. And that makes sense because think of a line. A linear function touches the x-axis at one point. A quadratic should touch it at two points. A cubic, which I know we haven't really done in class, but it has three curves. One curve going up, another curve going down, and another curve going back up. So it could touch it at three spots. Wait, what do you call the double parabola thing? The double parabola thing? Uh, I call it a W that, that <laughs> were you talking about this Nelson, the, this one? Yeah. This is a cubic. So it has three curves, one, then it goes down to make a second curve. So basically it curves up like this and then it's going to curve down like this. And then it kind of curves back up over here. So that's why it's a cubic. A quadric, I hate quadric because it means power four. And the reason why they both have the word qua in it is it means four. It's just, I guess people weren't thinking when they're like, let's call it a quadratic because it's a square and square is squared. So. Yeah, that's pretty much the thinking behind that. So this means four curves. One, two, three, four. So it kind of makes a W. I would call this more of a double, double parabola than the other one because it makes a little W. But yeah, so... Some quadratics might look like a parabola. Some cubics might look like this, almost like a line. 
it just depends on the cur how how distinct the curves are. So let's see this. So if it has two real solutions, I don't know why we went from that all the way to this, but okay. <laughs> so if it has two real solutions, it crosses it at two spots. If it has one solution, it has that one spot. I'm like looking at the chat right now, Victoria's comment, and I'm like, this, this just goes to show how dumb Edmentum teaches sometimes <laughs> because it's like, hey, you know how we asked you those questions? Now we're going to explain why those questions that you probably just guessed on are true or not. So this is one repeating because if you think about it, it has two curves, one curve going down. So it touches it one time and another curve going up. So it's touching it twice. So that's where the repeated part comes in. And then this one never touches the x-axis at all. So it has two complex solutions, two solutions that aren't real, 2i and um, negative 2i. So there's going to be like an imaginary number here and here where they touch each other. And we're going to get into that in this uh, module. All right. So is it possible to have a real and a complex solution? Because of what we just studied, no. Not for, not for parabolas, at least. They don't really fit. Once we start having more curves, like let's say we have a shape that kind of looks like this, you can have real and imaginary solutions. But for parabolas, because there's a line going straight down, it either has to be real or fake. I shouldn't say fake, imaginary. Or they use the word complex. And I think technically the mass community wants to call it complex because they're not imaginary. They do have a purpose. So they're complex. So in linear, we can either have a real solution or no solution no complex. It's impossible for it to be complex. With a quadratic, we can have it as too real or too complex. There is no other answer, no other way. With a cubic, I know we're not really talking about them right now, but you can have a real and too complex. It can look like this. So here's my x-axis. It's going to cut through once, and then it never touches the x-axis again. So here would be my two complex solutions right here. I should do it in a different color. They do bounce, but they never go into it. So this is kind of weird. I like how they call it complex because at first they called it imaginary because they're not real. They never touch it with a real number. And then they call it complex because what are they talking about? It's complicated. So these are just the idea that if they curve, they go like this. I know right now it's like, seems hard, but just think of it as like the number of curves and it's kind of curving, but it never touches the x-axis. These things honestly get more useful when you get into higher level math. All right, so let's talk about this. So if this is one of the roots, this is one of the roots, then how can we figure out what the answer is? Well, here's the thing. If we don't want imaginary solutions, if we don't want complex solutions, what we have to do is we have to do the conjugate. I think I mentioned this like a bunch of times last time. The conjugate is the same thing but instead of having this negative in, or this positive in the middle, we're going to have a negative. What this does is when we do it, if we do this in a box method, I think I did this last time, but I'm just doing it again to kind of emphasize on it. What happens here is we get 5 times 5, which is 25, 5 times 3i, which is 15i, 5 times negative 3i, 
negative 15i. And then we end up getting this 3 times 3, which is negative 9i times i, which is i squared. So we end up getting this 5 plus 9. So notice how we don't have any imaginary solutions here. So that's what we're doing. Explain your answer in the formation of this. So if any. So determine the other roots, if any. So we're saying it's a quadratic. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say the answer is 5 minus 3i. The reason why this works is they call it the fundamental theorem of algebra. Just think of it as gravity. What comes up must come down. So, Or this idea that because there's a degree of two, meaning the power is two. So because there's a degree of two, there must be two solutions. So because quadratics, quadratics have a degree of two, they must have two solutions, whether real or imaginary. So let's see what they say. So they said uh, the equation quadratic, based on the fundamental theorem of algebra, we know that there must be two real roots. That's basically what I said. Because it has a degree of two, a quadratic has a degree of two, it has to have two roots. Because complex roots come in conjugate pairs. Conjugate. So there's that word again, conjugate. They're finally talking about it because I feel Edmentum presents things in a weird order. So they're finally using the word conjugate, even though I've been saying it over and over again. Conjugate, that means we have to make that middle sign that positive over here, negative. Does that kind of make sense, guys? Or have you guys tuned out already? <laughs> Between me talking about complex numbers and real numbers. It make a sense. It make a sense. That's good. <laughs> good. And all right, so. Here's the quadratic formula, which if you guys need help with the quadratic formula, Nelson said he memorized it. He has it like Wait, wait, wait. Path. Let me take a screenshot, please. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you take a screenshot when I wrote it down the first time? Um, uh, I know I speak English. ¿Por qué no tomaste una foto la primera vez que la hice? Nelson said, I gotta go now. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, good night. <laughs> Hold up. Let me think. ¿Por qué vu ne Pa, foto. That's as far as I got with my um, Nine. French. Nine? That's German. That's not even French. Anyway, so now we're going to talk about the quadratic what form. Language. What happened? German? It's a good language. I didn't say it was a bad language. I was just speaking French and he responded in German. You said it like it was a bad language. I did not say it like it was a bad language. Wait, does, does anybody speak German on, on here? Nine. I know a little bit of German. I don't know it like 100%. Yeah. I know how to, I know how to call you a vacuum cleaner. Noise. Um... I don't know a lot of German. I took a few classes in it. Um, I got up to like sixth grade level, but I don't speak the, like the full language. It's a, it's a cool language. Though. I love it. And 
That's my life story. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, now they're talking about the discriminant in the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, technically, if you guys really wanted to, you know, I've been doing the box method. You can use the quadratic formula like for every solution. You don't even have to use the box method. It kind of solves the equation for us. So this one actually would have been a better spot to take a screenshot, Nelson, than the first one. But this is going to say the rule that I said earlier in this in the last video that we did, which is this idea of two real solutions if it's greater than zero exactly one real solution but it's repeated when it equals zero so when this equals zero there's one solution and the reason why that is if you add or subtract zero you're just left with negative b over 2a If this was a positive solution, then it splits up. So whenever you guys see a square root, it usually is going to split up into two solutions because of the plus or minus. So for example, let's say x squared equals 4. x has two solutions. It has the positive 2 or the negative 2. It splits up into two different answers. If you have x squared equals 0, well then guess what? You're just one answer. So I know I've said this a few times before, but now momentum's catching up to what I've been saying. All right, so here's what we're going to do here. We're going to figure out if we need a complex answer. And the way we do that is we're just looking at this part of the quadratic formula, what's called the discriminant. All right. So when we're looking at the discriminant, we're trying to figure out this A, B, and C. So there's a few times when I taught algebra that I would be like, what's the A, what's the B, what's the C? And this is like a good practice for you guys to understand. There's an invisible one here, so my A is one. The B is this, and the C is 10. So this helps us when doing the discriminant. So right here, they're just um, admentum, just kind of reviewing what the A is, what the B is, what the C is. And then they're plugging it into the discriminant. So you guys should have that written down somewhere. The discriminant is minute is this B squared minus 4AC. All right. Okay, it's coming back to me now. I, I, I don't know why I completely forgot it earlier, but I, I, I'm starting to remember it. Do you remembering the A, the B, and the C stuff? Yeah, I, I think when you when you mentioned the A, the B, and the C, that's when I remember the formula. <laughs> and then, so if we plug all of this in, of course, oops, let me go back. So according to this, we have a negative. So that should give mean, so because this is negative, that's telling us we're gonna have two complex solutions. That's what they're saying right here. This next one, it's like, when we plug it into the whole formula, look what happens here. We're plugging it in, we're plugging in the A, the B and the C. And then once we do that, we're like, wait a minute, we have a negative one here which means it turns into an I. They're kind of skipping a few steps, guys. I hate how momentum does this. It's like, we want you to be very detailed here, but then when we want to do something, we're going to skip steps. They forgot to show the part where they're splitting this into two, negative six over two, plus or minus two. This is an I, so they're showing the I divided by two. So they split up the denominator um, in order to make this happen. So that's how come this becomes an I and this right here, if you divide it, becomes this negative three. So basically by knowing that our discriminant is going to give us two fake solutions, 
or because our discriminant is negative, that means that we're going to have two complex solutions. Does that make sense? Maybe somewhat. Well, what happens if the discriminant is zero? So now they're explaining it. Well, like, well, I feel like Edmentum's like slow to the party sometimes. So if the discriminant is zero, you can't, if you do plus or minus zero, it doesn't change our answer. We're just going to be left with this negative B over 2A. Wow. So they're finally saying this. <laughs> All right. So let's get on with this. So if the discriminant, so discriminant of this quadratic is, so they're saying, what is B squared minus 2AC? All right, now, Sin, you remember this B and A. What am I plugging in for B? Wait, what? What am I plugging in for my B? The equation's right here. 3x? Just 3. Oh, okay. Does anyone want to take a guess at what I'm plugging in for A? Can everybody volunteer at once? What's going to be my A for this quadratic? Uh, we don't include the number in front, but yeah, you guys are right. It's going to be the two. So just remember that when we're writing a standard equation, notice how the X's are already here. So when we're talking about the A, we're only talking about this part, but yeah. I don't know how you got 98, Carter. That's weird. All right, and then C. So who wants to take a guess at what the C is? Yep, five. So when I do this, I'm going to do three squared, which is nine. Take away whatever two times two times five is. So two times two is four times five, that's 20. So I have a negative discriminant. So the discriminant of the quadratic is negative. So if it's negative, that means it's less than zero. All right, if it's less than zero, if I have a negative, that means I have zero real solutions. I don't have any real solution. This is all made up. And I'm going to have two complex solution. I'm going to have two complicated solutions because I'm going to get the square root of negative 11. So in the quadratic formula, I'm having a negative. So that's why I'm going to get this negative, this, these two non-real solutions. And I did something wrong here, apparently. Oh, shoot. My bad. Nelson, why didn't you tell me this was supposed to be a four instead of a two? Come on, Nelson. All you asked was for three. <laughs> fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to do complete... Um, so there's a bunch of methods to figuring out. Factoring. This was the box method or the X method. I talked to you guys about the X method later. It's when you do the A. Your A times your C. And you're going to put your A times your C here. And you're going to put your B here. And it should add up. These two add up to the B but they multiply to be the whatever the A times the C is. That's the X method. I like the box method because the box method always works without getting complicated. The quadratic formula, that formula that Nelson took a screenshot of, 
but I forgot to ask him what the number in front of the AC was. Or taking the square root. That one's like the easiest. So if you had something like this, you can figure it out by just taking the square root. So there's a bunch of ways to solve quadratics is what they're saying. Completing the square is probably one of the hardest ones. Um, taking the square root. I don't know why I clicked on that one. I meant to click completing the square. This is the one where you have to take half of B squared and add it to both sides. Hopefully you guys don't have to deal with that one too much. But we're going to deal with factoring right now. So if we're dealing with factoring, this is the idea of us coming up with solutions. Um, so they're using what's known as the sum, the sum of squares, what I called SOS, the help method. So the sum of squares is this formula. So you guys might want to either take a screenshot or write this down somewhere. Sum of squares is this idea of a squared plus b squared equals this. So what they're doing here is they're like, hey, we can use sum of squares to figure this out. So if you have an ax plus c, this is a good hint that we're going to use sum of squares, SOS. If you guys have an ax plus or minus c, you can use dose, the difference of squares. That's basically the same formula, except we don't have an i. And this is a minus. Thank you, Nelson. Thank, thank you for letting me know that's four. <laughs> I don't know when you said that. You probably said that in a timely manner. I just never read the chat. <laughs> so that's what we're doing here. They're just using the sum of squares formula. All right, so let's take a look here. So ba, ba, ba. they can also do it by taking the square root. So they're going to do the square root by literally doing it over here. And then it's like, cool, we get this plus or minus i, which if we look at the first one, that was our answer here. We just set both of these equal to zero. And that's how we end up getting this, these two answers. And if we take the square root, same thing. And then they're going to teach us by the quadratic formula. So we're going to plug every, first we're going to move everything over. So we're going to move everything over to get into standard form, this ABC way. We're going to identify our ABC. We're going to plug everything into the discriminant. I don't know why they're doing this first. I think to just make it easier when you do the quadratic formula. Yep, definitely to make it easier when you do the quadratic formula. So they solve for the discriminant first. That way, when they do the quadratic formula, all they had to do was plug it. Well, what are you doing, Edmentum? You already solved for this. Why are you doing all these other steps? This is Edmentum being special. Don't judge Edmentum, guys. It's special. <laughs> all right. So they. they I can relate. Well. <laughs> So what they did, and I don't know why they decided to do the discriminant. There was no reason to figure out how many solutions we had if we were just going to do the quadratic formula anyway. But they did the quadratic formula. They divided everything by 2 here. This is a step that I think is weird that they always skip. They divided everything by 2, and that's why we get to here. So they just work it out. What The way I always explain it is always do your multiplication first. When you're doing this, that's why they're doing the negative times the negative. That's why they're doing this. That's why they do this. Then after that, simplify. Oh, notice how also when I said do all your multiplication, they also did the two. Simplify. And then you're going to do a factor tree. So you do a factor tree for 24. We get 4 and 6. Square root of 4 is 2, and you can't take the square root of 6. So that's how come a 2 comes out and the 6 stays inside. So this is the one where um, 
I said that if you have a couple, the couple goes outside and the single is ever by themselves. So in this case, we have a two and a three that are single here. They're going to stay inside. So that's why this six stays inside. All right. So now they want us to do it again. But now they're going to want us to do it by completing the square. This is the one where what we do here is we make it so we have our AX plus BX here. And we are going to make it equal to C. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this B and take half of it, square it, and add it to both sides. So because we made up this two, this four out of nowhere, we have to do it to both sides. But what's cool about this is the very next step. Oh my gosh, Edmonton, why do you skip steps? They're kind of skipping this part where by doing this, completing the square, we get this really cool effect where we get this. X plus half of B squared is equal to whatever ended up over here. I think they're going to try to explain it over here a little bit. So this lets us do this. What was half of B? Half of B was negative 2. So that's why it's X minus 2 squared. We're going to simplify this side and we get this. From here, we're just going to take the square root. And whenever we take the square root, it's plus or minus. Is everyone following along OK? I know this one's like really nasty and mean. Completing the square is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to teach. All right, cool. I'm holding on. You're holding on? What are you holding on to? Life. Life. Just kidding. Wow. Just kidding. <laughs> um, shit. The lesson. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now they want us to do all these answers with all the different methods. All right. So, da, da, da. so which one of these is going to have two distinct roots? So we're going to do that. That's that B squared minus, what's the number that goes next, Nelson? Four. Yes, four. Now I remember to ask him. So we're going to do that. B squared minus four AC. So let's think about this for each one of these. So if I do that here, I'm going to do negative 4 squared minus 4. My A is 1. My C is 2. So I end up getting 16 minus 8. So that's a positive number. I don't care what the answer is. I just care that it's positive. So this tells me that this has two answers. I'm going to do it again over here. I'm going to do negative 2 squared minus 4, 5, because that's my A, 3. So I get 4 minus, well, I don't even have to do much more, because obviously 4 times 5 is bigger than 4. So I know this is a negative answer. I don't really care what it is. I just care that it's negative. So that means these are two imaginary solutions. Does that make sense, guys, why I don't have to finish this? There's no reason for me to finish it. Work smarter, not harder. All right. And this one. Let's take a look at this one. So I'm going to have, I don't have a B. Well, I do. It's just invisible. So I'm going to do 1 squared minus 4. Well, right off the back, I already know this is going to be negative. Or do I? Always double check because check this out. This is a negative times a negative, which is a positive. I didn't mean to trick you guys on that. I just kind of wanted you to think about it. Like, well, if we're going to subtract four, but the problem is we're multiplying by a negative. 
so that makes this a positive. So the whole thing's positive, so that means it's going to have two real solutions. When working smarter is hard for you. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you, Nelson. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, our next one, this one, I, I really, really don't have a B. There's no trick invisible B at all. It's just going to be the square root of negative uh, 4 times my A, which is 13, times negative 4. Well, luckily, I did this. So if I would have just dismissed it, like, oh, if I don't have a B, that means I'm negative. Not necessarily true because my C was negative. So because my C was negative, it ended up being positive. So that means it has two real solutions. Is this kind of making sense, everybody? Then I'm going to do negative. Well, let's do that. Right, cool. Negative 6 squared minus 4. My A is 1 and my C is 9. So no tricks here. This is just negative 36. Wait, 36 take away 36. That's 0. That means this only has one answer. It just repeats. It literally just bounces off of the x-axis. The next one here, we're going to take a look at it, and we're going to be like, all right, negative 8 squared minus the 4, the 1 from here, and the 16. So we're going to get 64 minus, well, guess what? 4 times 16 is also 64. I don't know. I recently memorized this. I didn't used to rem remember it, but... Recently, I learned that 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So I barely memorized that right now. I think I memorized it this week, actually. So the next thing we're going to do here is this. Now I really don't have a B again. So it's just minus 4. My A is 4. And my C is 11. Well, there's no way around it. This has to be a negative number. So that means we have two complex solutions. What? All right, Momentum, I hate you. I did all the work and you said I was wrong. All right, so something happened there and I don't know why Momentum being mean to me right now. I got literally, what? Why doesn't this have an answer? That has to have an answer. Why would they give it to you if it's not going to? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, they're being mean to me. Like, why? 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 <laughs> Negative 4 times A times C. That's a negative. All right, that's momentum being special. I'm not off my game, Victoria. <laughs> and don't keep score. This one is definitely me plus one and momentum zero. Because that has a thing. It's trying to, I mean. <laughs> oh, and momentum's trying to throw me off my game. Okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> it, it even says so right here that it's negative, so it's two complex solutions. Wow, Edmentum. Get it together. All right. So let's kind of solve this trying to use factors and stuff like that. So if we use the factor method, this is, if we look at it, all of these are the, sorry, I put, I was going to put those. This is the SOS, the help method. 
So it soaks, meaning that we're going to have this A plus BI times A minus BI. So if we take the square root of X, we're going to get, if we take the square root of X squared, we get this X. And if we take the square root of 10, we can't really take the square root of 10. So we're just going to say square root of 10. And not zero. And then just to make it a little easier, I'm just going to copy this, paste it. Oh, and it's supposed to be negative 10. I forgot because we're going to do this. So the factors are this. And do, 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 this is supposed to be I. There's supposed to be an I right here somewhere. There we go. So this is plus and then an I. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to do this by hand just to make it faster for you guys. Uh, this ends up being 2x minus 5i and then 2x plus 5i, and that's because I'm taking the square root of both. I'm using the, I keep saying difference, sum of squares. I didn't really use uh, sum of squares before. I just kind of use the quadratic formula every single time. So that's how come I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering that it's SOS or SOS. What do you guys think? Should I call it SOS or SOS? SOS. Sauce. Sauce? All right, we're going to call it sauce, even though there's no A or U or C. Or but e. the O can make the ah sound. Pretty sure O does not make an ah sound. <laughs> you might, uh. you might want to talk to Josh about that one, Nelson. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So according to the sauce method, we get this. So this means that for the first one, my answer is going to be x equals plus or minus i square root 10. And for this one, we're going to have to divide by 2. So I end up getting this x equals 5i over 2. Notice how I'm dividing by this. So I'm basically just taking this and dividing it. Does that make sense? And if you guys don't believe me, here's Edmentum trying to explain the same thing. Yes. <laughs> All right. And for this last one, Again, they're going to do it in a bunch of different ways. Um, what are they doing here? Oh, I see. What they're going to do here is they're going to just move this over, move these over, and we're just going to take the square roots. So if we take this, If I move this over here, I'm going to get this negative 27 divided by 2, and then I take the square root of that. Is that 27? Oh, that's 28. My bad. I knew that. I know how to add, guys. So I get this square root of 14. So I move this over, I get eight negative 18. So that's going to give me this, this right here. Well, if I move this 81 over, I get negative 81. The square root of negative 81 is 9. And it's i because it's square root of negative 81. Next thing I'm going to do, this one's actually not that bad. If I add this over, because I'm subtracting, now I'm adding, it's negative 4. Well, what's the square root of negative 4? 2i. The square root of 4 is 2. 
the square root of a negative is i. Not today, Admentum. You're not going to be weird to me today. All right, and the next one, this one, we add this over here, and we end up getting this bu, 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 39, 39 divided by 3. This is probably the only not imaginary number because we can take the square root of 13. We just won't. <laughs> All right, and now, choo, choo, choo. now we're out of time. So this is gonna have a part three. Nelson, make a meme since this is gonna be one that I'm not doing in class. What meme are you gonna do? Uh, what's the context? I don't know. Make a meme about me being mad at Ad Admentum and sauce. 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 All right, got it. Sauce, Admentum, and me. Put it on the thing by the end of today, because I'm going to record the okay. videos on Friday. Got it. Cool. All right, guys. So you guys have Nelson's meme to look forward to at on Friday. But have it at the end of today, Nelson. Boss. All right. <laughs> All right, guys.